Well, speaking of, honestly, we should just, this is a good transition. Speaking of people who have a, a difficult time, uh, you know, keeping up with reality, I will be honest with folks. I have not kept up with this season of the Alex Jones show. Uh, so somebody's going to have to fill me in on all of the lore. Um, but we have a, a pretty interesting uh, development here. It's a clip from Twitter that somebody pulled. Uh, with you know Alex Jones losing his mind over over the Q folks, um, and and before we put it on, honestly, that doesn't surprise me at all because Q is coming for his his grip, right? Uh, Q is something that he doesn't control. Um, but I have to say, it is very funny to see a couple crackpots going at it. Yeah. <laughs> He broke all that. We know that. I'm saying Q tells us stuff and all of its lies is what I'm saying. You keep, you keep interrupting me. Because you're lying. Because you're full of shit. That's why. Because every god thing, goddamn thing out of you people's mouths doesn't come true. And it's always, oh, there's energy. And oh, now we're done with Trump. You said he was the Messiah. You said he was invincible. You said it was all over. They were all going to get Mo. Now, oh, he's part of a larger thing of Q. I will not suffer your Q people after this. I knew what you were day one. And I know what you are now, and I'm sick of it. I'm sick of all these witches and warlocks and pumpkin popsums and everything. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> I can't talk to you anymore. Jesus, Lord, help me. Oh, oh my God. You broke all that. From what I've seen of uh, Alex Jones lately, I mean, it was always unhinged, but it's just like a complete free for all at this point. And what's funny about like the Q stuff is that I have seen Q not anonymous talk about this a little bit, and it won't be a significant portion uh, because I think it's juiced, frankly, by partisan uh, allegiance to Republican Party. But there will be a not insignificant number of Q people they predicted that will follow the uh, new uh, sort of revision that Joe Biden is actually working with Trump and Q and that Trump has passed along uh, orders to him. Yeah, because they can't be they can't be wrong right this is this is why like when the the um the mass arrests never happened this is why what matt chrisman was doing was so great with the q people which is that he was basically saying make a testable prediction that will happen because they it's obviously just a millennial uh a millenarian um end of the world type of uh conspiracy theory cult but uh, I th yeah um I think I, I mean I think that's 100. percent And obviously Q is just completely bonkers. I think you posted something or, or retweeted something the other day. I was trying to see if I could find it, but I can't. Um, about searching for the uh, for the phrase on Twitter like "acting weak when you are strong." Oh right. Um, you know, which is basically like now the Q, uh, the Q mantra was like that Donald Trump is acting weak even though he's strong, and it's always. I mean, you know, I have people I know who are really deep into this rabbit hole unfortunately and it's amazing yeah. to see the kind of posts they do on social media it's all just like just wait just wait and it's like oh just wait until december 11th just wait until you know december 31st just wait until january 6th just wait until next week it's always just like it's you know it's like waiting for good oh, it's like it's never going to happen um you know and obviously because it's it's a grift um but there's a there's a part of it that's like again not defending q but it's just like there's a part of it that is, you know, it, it, it's people treating politics like a like a, a soap opera, which most people do. And most of our media system has taught people to expect. Pick your reality, choose your favorite people, and you just live your own life, right? And you just don't think about politics as something that you can like really uh, directly um, interact with. And I think a lot of those Q people... Um, who stormed the Capitol last week, learned that lesson the hard way, as we were talking about in the, the main show today, all these people saying, oh, I was just joking, or I didn't realize this, you know, I thought this was supposed to, you know, this was just an event, this was just like a rally, this is just like a fun activity um, that, you know, that we're doing, because there really is a disconnect uh, for most people's like, political consciousness and political media from like the actual political reality of the fact like, oh, no, actually, you can't storm the Capitol. <laughs> um in in a mall without having kind of consequences and there really is a, a, a you know a separation there and q extenuates and like amplifies uh that kind of disconnect between like media and reality um but it's not unique to q is more what i'm trying to get at yeah absolutely and i i feel like stressing to the extent i want to get into 
uh, like issues of censorship is like what happened at the Capitol didn't happen because all these people have a uh, new electronic platforms that they can get radicalized. Yeah. On. Like this is this happened because the party is lying. Like it's not mm -hmm. like, oh, where did they get this idea that it's because there's people literally in Congress that like, of course, it wasn't going to shift. It wasn't an actual opportunity to, you know, change the results of the array of power. Right. In the mm -hmm. last election. Right. It was never going to get there. But they still had people fundraising off that. I mean, Ted Cruz himself put out a fundraiser, a Stop the Steal fundraiser. I believe it was a Stop the Steal. Oh, yeah. No, he did. Along the same lines in the same afternoon. Um, so like. Like, I think there is almost too much focus on, and it, I hate it. I know people who are like, yeah, my, my uh, sister is into QAnon stuff and it sucks. And I think, I do think like the social media networks are responsible for that. At the same time, like that's a symptom of uh, rot at the top. No, it's, it's the same kind of brain rot. Um, that we got when liberals were saying the opposite about social media. Oh, look at social media. It's leading to revolutions in Egypt, right? It's leading to this, you know, to the Arab Spring, which was BS from the start. That was a complete colonial uh, narrative, don't, you know, first and foremost. But the secondary narrative was this idea that tools make history, not people, which is just fundamentally wrong. And it's this kind of escapism um, that a lot of these folks are, are leaning into with social media. It's like, no, the social media didn't create the rot. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, no, yeah, essentially we just have like, you know, we have very fast communication systems. Yes, that changes the way that we interact with each other. Yes, that changes the way that we can spread information. But the systems at play, the people creating uh, those tweets or interacting with that live in the same society and reality as all of us. So all the actions that they're doing are reflections of that society. And you really give yourself a get out of jail free card um, if you're going to sit here and say like, oh, well, actually, if, if Facebook just had more fact checkers, I mean, give me a break with that stuff, too. Uh, we've been on the other side of that for years before they even started uh, policing as regularly as they do now. These people are not neutral, right? So one, you don't want to give these people that kind of power in the first place. But two, it's just, it's a cheap out um, to think that if we dealt with a social media problem, uh, that we wouldn't have this just complete delusion um, in, in our political world. I'm sorry, they, they just like, one is not, uh, technology is not creating that delusion. 